As Abraham Lincoln said, you can't fool all of the people all of the time. It's time all of us stop being fooled by those well-meaning bureaucrats who claim to protect us because they say we can't protect ourselves. The men and women who have fostered this movement have been sincere. They believe that we as consumers are not able to protect ourselves, that we need the help of a wise and beneficent government. But as so often happens, the results have been very different from the intentions. Not only have our pockets been picked of billions of dollars, but also we are left less well protected than we were before. Well, in product safety, in the state of that, the, the lawnmower industry had said for 20 years they could not design a safe lawnmower. Only when the Consumer Product Safety Commission forced them with the new standard, suddenly their creative genius was overnight. They came up with net whips that were made out of plastic, and they came up with very innovative forces, which is why that government presence actually triggered innovation that otherwise would have been left uncovered. It's very easy to see the good results. The bad results, it's very much harder to see. You haven't mentioned the products that aren't there because the extra costs imposed by Consumer Product Safety Commission have prevented them from existing. You haven't mentioned the case of the Tris uh, problem on the you know, flammable garments. Here you had a clear case where the, uh, a regulation of the CPSC essentially had the effect of requiring all manufacturers of children's sleepwear to impregnate them with Tris. Oh, but that's not Three years, <laughs> five years later, the regulation required the garments to be non-flammable, and as it happened, Tris was the most regularly, readily available chemical which could do it. Kathy Riley? That's those, absolutely not those, true. Uh, but fin let me no. finish the story first, because the second half of the story is the important part of it. It turned out that Tris was a carcinogen. And five years later, or three years later, I'm not sure the exact time, the same agency, <laughs> had to prohibit the use of those sleepwear garments, force them to be disposed of at great cost to everybody concerned. I say there is no place for government to require me to do something to protect myself. Now, if, if government has information, well, if has it or get, obtains. for a moment, suppose it has information, then it should make that public and available. The next question is, are there circumstances under which it's appropriate for government to collect information? There may be some such circumstances. They have to be considered one at a time. Sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. But you see, I want to get back. Take your, your area, Ms. Claybrook. Uh, you are now involved in an airbag problem. That's right. If I understand the situation, I don't know anything about the technical aspects of it, but the airbag in a car is there to protect me as a driver. It doesn't prevent me from having an accident hurting somebody else because it's only activated by an accident. Right. All right, now, why shouldn't I make that decision? Who are you to tell me that I have to spend whatever it is, $200, $300, $400 on that airbag? Well, we don't tell you that. What we say is that when a car crashes into a brick wall at uh, 30 miles an hour, the front seat occupants have to have automatic protection built into the car. Have and it's to. a very Why have it's to? It's a very minimal... Why have to? I don't care whether it's an the, airbag the reason or a seat why, belt. Well, there are two reasons why. One is that the sanctity of life is a fairly precious entity in this country. It's more precious to me than it is to you. My life is more precious to me than to you. The question is... Not a question of giving them the information. The question is, what is your right to force somebody to spend money to protect his own life, not anybody else, but only himself? And, and the next question I'm going to ask you, do you doubt for a moment that prohibiting alcohol would save far more lives on the highways than an airbag, uh, seat belts, and everything else? And on what grounds? Are you opposed to prohibition on grounds of principle or only because you don't think you can get it by the legislature? I'm opposed to prohibition because I don't think it's going to work. That's the reason I'm opposed but to prohibition. But suppose it would no, no, work. No, sorry, I want to get, the, the, I I get to the principle. Sure. Yep. I want to know, suppose you could believe it would work. Suppose you could prohibition. believe prohibition could work. Would you be in favor of it? No. What I am in favor of is building <laughs> products. I am in favor of building products so that at least they service the public. I was fascinated by some of the initial comments. Everybody agrees that the old agencies are bad. But the new agencies that we haven't had a chance to, you know, I would, agree, I would agree with his general position that there is a role for government in pollution. I would agree, second, that the present techniques of controlling pollution are terrible. And they are terrible, and they are what they are for precisely the reasons he specifies. Because they are an effective way in which you can use the excuse of pollution to serve some very different objectives. 
That's part of the way in which governments meow, if I may go back to my cat. We've discussed this at greater length in a book that we've written to go along with this program on Free to Choose. The program itself was too short for us to be able to get much in about pollution. Indeed, we'd, we really had to skip it because it's such a complicated and difficult subject. But there is a real role for government because that is a case in which you're protecting third parties. And every one of the valid cases, in my opinion, for government entering in has to do with third parties. There's a case for requiring breaks because that's to protect the person you might hit. That's wholly different. There's no case for requiring an airbag, in my opinion, but there is a case for requiring well, good breaks. There is nothing that two people do in a world. No man is an island to himself. Everything has third party issues, but you've got to have a sense of proportion. And the important thing is that government intervention has third party issues. When government intervenes into these affairs, that harms third parties. It picks my pocket, it reduces my freedom, it restricts many activities exactly. around the, the world. Is, what are the benefits?